Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you the span-like type we had before span was introduced in .NET. Now, if you do not know what span is, it's an extremely important type and in order to watch this video, you kind of have to know what it is. So I highly recommend you check the description down below and you check my span video first. It explains everything about the type and why it is basically one of the biggest reasons why .NET is so extremely fast nowadays. But in this video, I'm going to explain what that previous type we had was, which even though it was replaced by span when that came out, is very important to understand. So you have a better understanding of how you can optimize performance for your own applications, both speed and memory. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on DOM train called Getting Started with Solution Architecture. And that course is made by James Eastham. Like I have said in the past, I only want to make courses myself on topics I am an absolute expert on. And on this, I just am not as good as James. So I asked him to come over and offer that course for us. James is a senior solution architect for AWS. So his knowledge on the subject and his position in the biggest cloud provider in the world makes him the perfect educator for something like this. The course is fantastic. I've taken it myself and I cannot stress enough how good the quality of that course is. I have said it in the past and I will say it again, getting very good in solution architecture and understanding the subject will really elevate you as a software engineer more than becoming better at the code itself because after some point you're gonna plateau but solution architecture doesn't really have a limit and the moment you understand when to choose the right tool for the right job you're going to be way more valuable into your company and your team now to celebrate the launch i want to offer the first 400 of you a 15 percent discount code so you can use the code you see now on your screen and claim a 15 percent discount at checkout trust me this go really really fast so if you want to get the course get it sooner than later now back to the video all right so let me show what i have here i have a simple console application and we have this array of names over here now let's say i want to get a slice of that array for example, the first three chapters says, so Nick, Rick, and Richard. So you might think that to do that, let's say slice of names, you can do something like this, names.take, and we can take uh, three of them. So if we do something like this, then I can say name in slice of names, and I can say console right line, and the name was name so if i go quickly and i run this as you're going to see we're going to get the first three and you can go further let's say if i want to get the second the third and the fourth you can say for example here with link skip one and then take three and if i do that then it goes ahead and it enumerates everything but this will actually give you an enumerable what if i say i, I want to work on this as if it is an array so you might think oh i'm going to use the two array method just to have the sort of equal experience so array here array here and this will work absolutely fine but the problem with it is that now you allocate the whole new array that contains these three values just to put it into perspective let me go ahead and show you some benchmarks just to understand where we stand with this let's say i have these same names in a static read only array here and i want to get a slice of that array as an array and that can be because i want to have it enumerated so i can make actions once and not have to enumerate it every single time so let's say we want to take the first two items we can do something like this all i'm going to do is just run this benchmark to see where we stand in terms of performance so make sure it's in release mode and then run it and let's see what we have okay so a quick benchmark let's see where we stand so 23 nanoseconds and 88 bytes of memory now that is the biggest problem here these 88 bytes of memory because we allocate that array again which needs to be garbage collected and cause these micro pauses now in dotnet core 2.1 we got the span type meaning that i can actually do something like this i'm going to comment this out and say var slice of names but instead of getting an array i'm going to get a span now there's two ways i can actually do this the first one is i can say names as span and when something starts with as in the context of link or these types of methods anyway it's casting it is not reallocation while two is actually reallocation so if i say as span now we have over here a span of strings which means i can go and say slice so give me a slice of that span and start from zero and give me two items and if i do that i do not need to get an array and if i just run this i'm going to get the two first names in the same way i did before but i did not reallocate that array and this span is extremely fast to work on and it's still going to be re-enumerated every single time because the way span works is that it uses that pre-allocated memory 
and it gives you a view over it to do things with it without having to reallocate it. Now, the other way you can actually change this to a span is you can say something like span of names and say names here. And if you change that to a span of strings, then there's an implicit operator that will convert that array into a span. So you don't have to say a span if you don't want to. That's just another way to do it. But there isn't really much of a difference behind the scenes. Now, in terms of benchmarks, I have the span slice over here and I have the array slice over here. Now, I can actually simplify this even further by using the range indexer. So I can do something like this and this will behind the scenes do the same thing as before. And just to see the difference, what I'm going to do is just uncomment this and rerun the benchmark and show you how much of a performance boost we're getting just on switching on span. So let's go ahead and run this. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see from 23 nanoseconds to 0.2 nanoseconds, huge difference in speed and also no memory allocated because we are reusing that pre-allocated memory. But what is this secret type I'm talking about, this span type we had hiding in plain sight? Well, actually, what you can also have is a segment of names. So I can say segment of names here, and then I can use the array segment type and get a segment of that array. So I can say names and then say uh, zero, which is the offset, and then two, which is the count. And that way, I can very much have the exact same experience if I go ahead and I run it. I can iterate over this as if it is an array. However, it is actually not an array. It is a struct wrapper called an array segment, which actually uses that backing array and internally uses pointers and offsets to give you sort of a view of that array, but only a slice of it. So if we look into this very scientific paint drawing, all that really this array will actually do, or this array segment, if we say, for example, I want the first four items, is actually build this segment, but point to the backing array. These over here still exist, but that array segment won't actually be able to access them because as far as the array segment is concerned, there's only four items here and we go all the way down to four and that is it. So if we actually want to see that in here, what I'm going to do is just show you how it's implemented. So we pass down the array, that array is actually stored behind the scenes and then we have an offset and a count. So offset means how far from the start are we pushing and count means how many items am I supposed to control? Contain. And because we just point that array, we're not copying that array, so we don't reallocate any memory. It's a very simple and smart design. And if you're wondering why I'm using arrays here and not like a list or something else, it's because arrays are actually in the heart of everything in C Sharp. Even if you're doing a list, for example, a list is backed by an array. So that can be used in so many ways to optimize C Sharp, and it was used for years. Now, if you're wondering how that would actually perform and compare to span and also array slice, let's take a look at it. So all I'm going to do here is say new array segment and then pass the names and then zero offset and two count. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see over here, the performance difference is huge. It's not as good as span, of course, because span is sort of special, but it is extremely fast, way faster than we had with the array slice. And again, no memory allocated because array segment is actually, as you can see over here, a read only struct and it is reusing that array. And it also, by the way, implements iList and iRead-only list, making it way more useful on what it can do and how it can be used. So you can still return any of those type, but inside have this array segment. Very, very handy. And actually, it also kind of had and still has a secret counterpart, which is the string segment. Now, again, string segment is kind of like superseded by the span of characters, which can be represented as a string or at least the read-only span of characters, but this was supposed to give you the same idea. You had this string buffer, which is the original string, and then you can get slices of that string without reallocating it. Now, if you were to use the dot value parameter of this method, then you sort of defeated the purpose, but for some other more niche operations, you could actually use that. But in both scenarios nowadays, I would actually use a span. But the array segment in general is an interesting thing to know because it gives you a better understanding of knowing how things can be allocated or not be allocated and how you can use offsets and reuse pre-allocated memory to interact with it. It's a very nice design. I actually confirmed with Steven Taub when I had him on the Keep Coding podcast, which I'm going to put a link in the description down below. If you want to know more about the performance improvements of .NET, it's a great chat. And he did in fact explain that array segment was supposed to be that span before span, but ultimately when span came around, it was just so much more useful and more powerful. And if you actually see all the methods that span has, it is just way, way more and way, way more performance focused as well. The array segment is great, but 
that is not as flexible, as feature rich, and as performance optimized as Span is. So in most scenarios, you want to use Span, but you should also know that this does exist. And if you're stuck in an old .NET version, this is something you can actually use to improve your performance. But now I want to know from you, were you aware of array segment and string segment? And is that something you ever used? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.